G'day and welcome to the Grow Small Business Podcast. I'm your host, Troy Truen. Each week, we speak with an owner who has grown a business with 5 to 30 team members to something bigger. Diving into their numbers and unearthing the pain they've experienced, we explore what they did to overcome each barrier and what they would do differently from day one. Let's get into it. Welcome everyone. Today I'm interviewing Francesca Izzelli from Basic Bananas and she's based in Sydney, Australia. Thanks for your time today. Thanks so much for having me. I'm really happy to be here. Let's start with how we know each other. So before we hit record, I mentioned that we're reaching out to particularly female business owners on LinkedIn after we do some research on people with interesting businesses and at least five team members so we can help keep that the balance on the podcast of 50-50 male-female. So I really appreciate your time. Hey, my pleasure. So I'm a sympathy guest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> well, tell our audience a bit about your business, what it does and how it makes money. Yeah, sure. I'm just adjusting my microphone here yeah, too. Right. So the main business that you mentioned, which I've been running with my business partner since 2009, is called Basic Bananas. So I'll quickly give a summary of that. And then I've got another really cool company that I'm working on here mm-hmm. in the background. So Basic Bananas is a marketing education program uh, or organization. And, and I came from advertising. So I worked in advertising and then 2009 started this business because we saw a gap in the market for SMEs. So your listeners, most likely and people that you work with, they often don't have the money and the budgets to work with advertising firms and spending a lot of money on marketing so we decided to show them what the big guys do and giving them really practical tools and and frameworks that they can use to grow their businesses so that's basic bananas and we run a flagship program which is a 12-month program and it's called the clever bunch and then we have other programs from there focusing on the entirety of marketing both online and offline and then i've got a, a little you know side hustle which is probably gonna grow into a a, well the goal is to grow into a big hustle (laughs) which is called ocean lovers and it's it's a side hustle because at the moment because it's a passion came out of a passion which is the ocean ocean conservation and i love spending time in the ocean and surfing and i just always saw all around the world how much we trash our oceans and how much rubbish there is floating around and how you know how the impact that humanity has on, a, on one of the most important ecosystems and so I decided to do something about it using my skills and my skills are in brand building so I built this brand called Ocean Lovers and we are currently making surf suits made from recycled fabrics and every piece that we have also comes with an, a bit of education so every every piece and every collection comes with an education around ocean or a sea animal and we also have kids programs that we sponsor to educate kids around that we have a partnership in Fiji around that we also have beach ambassadors and things like that so that's the the second Great. sort of side hustle yeah yeah, that sounds very exciting. Is And that business is just launched or about to launch on market? No, actually it launched 2016. Mm-hmm. So it's it's not super young, but when COVID hit, I had to pull back and also my team just got really busy with Basic Bananas. Yep. And we have an agency also on the side. So that got really busy because we had to change everything that we did from face-to-face training to doing everything virtually. So that, that was quite the change and also a quite... Uh, a lot of work so I couldn't focus too much on ocean lovers in that time yep I love the idea for basic bananas because uh, I moved to London 12 years ago and bought into a small IT support company and we had a similar mantra that unless you're 50 or or more team members you often don't aren't big enough to have the budget to hire your own in-house IT person for example and so I think similar with marketing as well Um, absolutely and so, yeah, I think it's a great um, segment to be in and providing a lot of support to small businesses because, as you well know, marketing is is hugely important and powerful in a small business. Yeah, and a lot of businesses, small, medium-sized businesses, don't have the budget to have an in-house marketing person. And if they do, some of our clients, they do have in-house marketing people. They often don't really know how to market the business, even if they've started marketing. It's, it's you know, marketing is very practical. You have to... You have to be quite creative, but also practical and, and exe- really good at execution. And so a lot of these business owners will then hire agencies 
that don't care as much about their business as they do. So our philosophy and belief is that as a business owner, you must understand marketing strategy. You must understand marketing strategy. You don't have to implement it. You can then go and hire those freelancers and agencies. But if you don't understand at least strategy, you'll just get ripped off or unintentionally sometimes. But it, it's really easy to then get pulled in different directions that might not suit the business. Yeah, totally. And how did you start out? So started out 2009 and all self-funded. So came from advertising and living on the northern beaches in Sydney, realized there are a lot of small businesses here and just, you know, talking to people and, and meeting people at events, realized that a lot of these small business owners just don't know how to market. They're doing random stuff. Maybe they have an ad in a paper or maybe they have an SEO company, but don't get the results. Maybe they do a little bit of digital advertising with an agency, but don't really get the results. Maybe do a bit of PR. So found very quickly that these guys need education and they want education. A lot of them want to know how to do this properly and sustainably and then how to use these, this knowledge for different businesses. So started out by... I think the very first workshop we ran, it was in our accountant's office. And there were, I think there were maybe four people there. So we ran a workshop on, on marketing planning or something. I think there were four people there. And one of them was my mother-in-law. And then, <laughs> and then two people that were maybe potentials and one that was probably didn't have a business. So it started out very, very small and rough. Mm. And then from there, just kept going, kept going, kept delivering good content and good education. And then, you know, the company just started to grow after about eight months of hustle, started to grow and grow. And we started to go into other cities, hired mentors and coaches to help us deliver the programs, went into the first country we went into was Canada with a Canadian partner that went really well for a few years until the partner at uh, turned out to steal from the company. So that wasn't a very great experience. And then we also went into the US with an amazing partner in the US, two women. And then we also went into Switzerland with a partner there and New Zealand did it from here, from Sydney. And then COVID came. So we went from having three, four people in the room at the first workshop to, you know, we would probably go up to 90, 100 for each session, but do them very regularly just to keep the room quite small. And then COVID came and everything went back to square one. <laughs> yep. Wow. So you, and are you still in Canada now? No. So we pulled out of everywhere physically. With COVID, we couldn't run any sessions anymore. It was too hard and the regulations kept changing. And then, you know, you're allowed, you're not allowed. So we pulled out of every country physically, but now we are running the, the, the flagship program is now virtually, completely virtually run by myself and, and Christo, my co-founder. And we have people from everywhere in the world now. So we still have Canadians in there, US businesses. We have just somebody from Uganda just joined the program. There's Sweden in there and Switzerland. So there's, there are people from all around the world now. So we, the world is literally our oyster now. <laughs> yeah, that's great. That's fantastic. Yeah. Right. And do you have some key numbers that illustrate the growth of the business? Yeah. So we started as a team of two people which was just me and my partner. And then I remember, I still remember our first assistant, we were working from home and she came and worked from our house. And then we had a first full-time team member, which was a Swiss guy. And he had to, we, we got, bought an office and he had to build his own desk. That was his first job huh. is to build his desk. Yeah. <laughs> he was great, Marco. And then from there, we went up to about 25 or so team members. And now we are down to a, to 15, 17, right. roughly. Yeah. And that's mainly because of COVID that you couldn't run the physical. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And also all the different partnerships in different countries we had to pause so that those those partners are not working actively right now. Yep. Yeah, great. And when was the moment you felt like you had succeeded? So it took about eight months to to really gain momentum when it was eight months of, of just hustling and being out there and, and meeting people and connecting and, and he, hearing what people needed and doing also free work, pro bono work to, to show that we can get them results and that, that the stuff that we know when it comes to marketing works. And then about after about eight months, it started to snowball. And 
when was the moment that I felt like we had succeeded. There was one particular moment I remember. I met this accountant at an event and he wanted us to do marketing consulting. I did a bit of consulting in the very early days and then stopped that after a few years when he got too busy with the programs. And this guy wanted me to do some consulting marketing for him and help him with his marketing. I thought it's great. I went to his offices and it was a, a good gig financially for us at the at that stage when we had hardly any income. And so went to his offices to get started and realized that he just wasn't super ethical in his business practices. Just there were just gaps there that I didn't really um, like. And so I had to say no to working with him and his team because I, we've always had a value from the very beginning that we will only work with companies and people that are doing good stuff and that are ethical and yeah. have integrity and he didn't have that so I remember I went home after saying no to this gig and I told my business partner and I said hey I said no to this and he's like what the heck why would you say no to this money I said well because of these reasons and he wasn't impressed but that's also when I felt like okay we, we, we've kind of succeeded a little bit because we, we're sticking to our guns. And when usually when you say no to something, something better comes along. You make room for the good stuff to come in. Yep. And that's what happened. Yeah. What does success look like to you? For me in business, it really is all about living the purpose that we've set out for the company. The purpose for Basic Bananas that we have set out is to help business owners succeed by providing them with the best marketing mentoring that we can give them. And so as long as we help people, business owners succeed, I know that we are successful ourselves. The more people we can help, the more successful we are. And we just had a team, we have a monthly virtual team celebration. And we just had that this afternoon before jumping on this call with you. And it's amazing. Every time we get together, we celebrate the successes of our members. And every time I'm amazed, every, like today we were also in tears a little bit about some of the success stories, also because there's floods going on and, yeah. you know, people are pulling together to, to help each other in this community. But that's, for me, that's success. For, and it's the same for, for ocean lovers. Success for me in that business is, again, if we, if we fulfill the purpose, the purpose in that business is to motivate the masses to save our oceans. So as long as we're doing that, then I feel like we're successful. Perfect question for you. Number one thing you'd recommend to marketing a fast growing business? You know, I mentioned a little bit what I think needs to, to happen for a business to be successful. One, and it's also related to marketing, one is to be purpose driven and, and have a purpose because it will also help with attracting the right team member. Number two is having a really good customer experience. And number three is having cohesive marketing marketing that adds value and that that you have in a system not isolated and scattered but marketing that is cohesive and and works and plays off each other how did you fund the business self-funded so we just had money saved from our job so for me from from advertising and marketing business partner had a surf business before uh, so so for business there wasn't that much cash around but we just lived very frugally didn't go out much and lived in a very crappy apartment yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and just put every cent that we had into the business so it was 100 bootstrap yeah and so no you haven't taken investors long uh, since no right no if you were to start up today with plenty of funding would you go into your industry i think if i had a lot of funding I would go into a SaaS company. So I would probably build a, uh, and yeah, I would probably software as a service or something with like NFTs, you know, now these days, something with NFTs for profit, for not for profit. So meaningful NFTs, which you see a lot out there now. So it would, it would probably be something in tech with yep. a lot of funding, but tech for purpose. Yep. So it would be a purposeful tech company. Can you outline the most stressful point in your small business growth journey so our audience can learn from it? Yeah, I'm not stressed very easily, but the most probably painful points in business, the most challenging ones have always been around team. So whether that is growing a team and making sure we have the right people on board that are aligned with the purpose and the values, we have to obviously have clarity on that first, or having a team member leave for me personally, because it's a, it's the human side 
mm. of the business is probably the the most rewarding and the hardest too. Like right now, I've got somebody who has been with us for seven years and she's amazing. She's leaving because she's moved up the coast and she wants to be in an office again with people. And it's so hard. <laughs> it's the hardest thing because it's like separation anxiety a little bit, yeah. I think. So, yeah. so the lessons for me in that also are just to hold on as many can to the good ones, but also let them go. She needs to go because she needs for her family's sake, she needs to find community up there. But yeah, that's probably the hardest and the most rewarding too. What area in business do you feel you've had to work on the most to add the greatest value? Again, I would say team is, is one. And then the other one would probably be operational, but I would say team again. Yeah. yeah. What have you enjoyed the least about managing fast growth? Details. I'm I'm really good at vision mm. and and big goals and and inspiring the team and and myself to kick goals. I'm really not good at details, so I need somebody on by my side to help with the details because that's not my strength, and I don't enjoy it either. <laughs> I get really bored very quickly yeah. of details. Mm. What do you love most about growing a small business? The types of businesses that I get involved in. The thing that, I, that they are all they all have to have some sort of a positive impact. So the thing that I love most about those types of businesses is the impact we get to make in people's lives. And that's not just for customers. So for us, it's business owners, but also for team members and then seeing the ripple effects. It's almost like for me, it's when the, the team that we have, it's almost like they're they're part of my family. They're almost like my my kids that I need to nurture. And, you know, even if they're older, it's like. I feel responsible for them to to have their journey however they want it and also to make sure that they live the life that they enjoy. What has been the biggest mindset shift for you in your small business growth journey? From the very beginning, I think that the thing that I learned quite early on, which has shifted the most and has also the most impact is intuition. And, and by that, what I mean is not following rules. I'm really good at not, I've always been good at not following rules, but it wasn't intuitive. It was just, just don't want to follow rules as a kid. And now it's more intuitive. So it's, it's taking advice that people give generously with a grain of salt yeah. and, and trusting my own intuition and do it my way. Even if there are countless examples of people having, you know, had the best intentions, but that I'm grateful that we didn't listen. Yep. Yep. Sometimes they don't know what, you know, what they're talking about <laughs> you just said that <laughs> what is the number one habit you think a small business owner needs to develop and maintain i think consistency is a great habit and that's consistency in everything consistency in taking action consistency in looking after yourself consistently looking after your team consistency in how you lead if you're not consistent with how you lead the team doesn't don't feel safe so you have to be consistent consistent in providing customer service. So I think consistency is a is a really good habit. And I feel like it's a really important habit for right now too. Sometimes I feel like do people forget about consistency? It's 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 important consistency. Yeah, I've actually got a, this on my desk. It's one of my favorite qu quotes, Benjamin Disraeli, the, the you former British Prime Minister. So oh, yes. the secret of success is constancy of purpose. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's really cool. I like that a lot. Want to become the best manager you can be? Check out our Kick-Ass Manager course at growasmallbusiness.com. Do the course and add your fellow managers for no extra cost. Join the 30%. 70% of people quit their job because of their manager. Can you talk to how you've added people to the team, some wins, mistakes and advice for those listening? Yeah, going back to the previous answer, I think then this again, probably some of the HR people that are listening to this and my partner also works in recruitment and they, they don't always agree with, with my point. It is I the best hires that I've ever made are, were based on intuition. Mm -hmm. They weren't based on 20 interviews and million fact checks. They were the, the one that is leaving now after seven years she came to an interview with two other people. It was a group interview. And I knew straight away that she was the right person without knowing too much about it else. 
and without checking any facts. And I had to fight for her too. I had to convince two of my team members that she's the right person. She turned out to be more than the right person. Yeah. So, so there are a few stories like that where how we added people to the team obviously is because we needed people to help with the workload and then hiring them based on intuition. Lots of mistakes made along the way with hiring also the wrong people when they weren't aligned, when I didn't listen to my intuition or when my intuition was maybe wrong. Also that happens too. And then they weren't aligned with the values or the culture. And that uh, there have been maybe in the 11 or 12 years or so, there have been maybe two or three quite significant moments that I remember we hired someone that wasn't the right fit culturally and it really disrupted the team it made the team go from amazing and a really great culture tight culture to I didn't even want to go to the office at some stage because somebody there just wasn't the right fit yeah that that is a super shit feeling if you don't even want to go to your own office yeah it's not that good (laughs) (laughs) what are some things you recommend to building a sustainable and kick-ass culture to help with the growth I think building a sustainable culture is really important and a kick-ass culture. I think it's people need to focus more on that now, especially as the world has changed in regards to how we work. We have, as business owners, we have access to talent from all around the world, which is very exciting. However, this talent also has access to companies all around the world so they can pick. They can pick the best companies. So if you want to have A players, which you really do want because it makes life so much easier. Yep. You need to have a really good culture. So you do need to work. I believe you need, do need to work on your culture. We have a, a thing that we actually do in our agency for other companies called a culture book. And in that culture book, we have clarity on, on, on our behaviors, how we behave at Basic Bananas, how we don't behave. We have team principles. We talk about how we communicate. And it just, it's just a, a guidebook that talks about the culture. And when we hire new team members, they get to see it and they can tell us if they want to be a part of it or not also. So it's a very easy way to opt in or opt out. So that's a really good thing. There's, I talk a little bit about this on our YouTube channel on Basic Bananas. So if you just go to Basic Bananas TV on YouTube, there's a four-part series, I think. It's called The Culture Matrix. So yep. there's a lot more on that there too. But I definitely think building culture is really, 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 really important. Yeah, great. We'll link through to that in the show notes for sure. Tell our audience how you've handled balance. Well, I haven't handled it. (laughs) It (laughs) It's the short answer. But the the longer answer is so I don't, I don't, I've never sought out to, to handle balance or to, to create a balance because I don't even really believe in it because I have a lot of passion for work but I also have a lot of hobbies I have a lot of things that I like to do outside of work I love I used to love well I still love traveling but I haven't traveled in ages because yeah, <laughs> of the world going nuts but yeah. also I, I surf a lot when you know when it's surfable I live on the beach here I play music I have a family I have a seven months old I have a dog that is crazy needs a lot of exercise I, li- I like to ride motorbikes so there's a lot that I like to do outside of work but then also like working. So I haven't really, I don't have balance. I'm not the person to ever give any work-life balance advice. I just do what works. And if I fit it in last night, I was working until nine o'clock. And you know, then today after this call, I'm going to finish and go to the beach. So it just works when it works. Yeah. And it kind of just seems to work yeah. <laughs> most of the time. That's good. How much professional development have you invested in yourself? A lot. I, I read a lot. So I get most of my mentorship from books. I read a lot of books. I do listen to podcasts too, but my main thing is is books. I'm also part of an organization called Entrepreneurs Organization. Mm-hmm. And that's a really great organization. I've been in it for six years, I think. Met a lot of amazing people, been to conferences. They also have an online library within resources that is really good conversations with other business owners that's sort of my personal development yep great and have you had mentors or coaches along the way i've had two one i had one in the so so now i would say my my best mentors and coaches are are people that i meet through books and life just talking every day to people and people i meet on my journeys and discussing business and helping each other so those are my best mentors i've had two one in the beginning that told me she was great but she told me not to call the business basic bananas which luckily i didn't listen to that advice yeah 
and then I had another one a few years into the business and I won't name her, but she was expensive. She was 15,000 US a month. Wow. And she, I realized that she's probably not the right mentor for me when a few months into the journey, she tried to convince me to do a photo shoot where I'm posing. So she sent me all these photos of how I need to pose, like one lying on the couch. I'm like, I'm not, this is not a, a sex business, you know, like this is actually a, a yeah. marketing. So I don't think I need to lie on the couch yeah. with like a skirt on and stuff. So that was, a, that was quite interesting. So that was money not well spent, but it made us hustle too, because we spent so much money on, yeah. on something that it just, I, I actually do think it helped us because of the motivation to okay we better yeah we better hustle to make decent money do you have a board of directors or advisors no i don't actually my my sort of advisors are my my eo forum we have a monthly meeting with, yep. with seven people yeah oh great all right we're on to our final five questions what do you think is the hardest thing in growing a small business i think the hardest thing is to just keep going, especially when it gets tough. It's good to, rem to remember that it will get easier. So the hardest thing is to just keep going. Favorite business book, which has helped you the most? I would say the book that had the most impact on me that I read at the very beginning of starting my own business was Richard Branson's book, Losing My Virginity. Yeah. And it just made an impact on me by the way that he runs his business with his own style. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's a great book. I've read all, all of his books. Any great podcasts or online learning tools you use for your own professional development? I listen to a few podcasts. The ones that probably most people listen to, I listen to Joe Rogan every now and then if I want to hear a bit of banter. I listen to Tim Ferriss. There are a few EO, also Entrepreneurs Organization podcasts. We have our own podcast too, Basic Bananas. So I learn also a lot from our guests and, and the conversations that we have. And yeah, those are probably the main ones that I use. I, I used to have a subscription to Masterclass, which I, I don't have at the moment, but I might, I just got a bit busy, but I'm, I, I do like their courses too. They're great too. Yeah, they look really good. Um, yeah, and I'm about to actually do a program with, I got asked to be a, uh, an author on a new platform, which is like Masterclass, but for businesses. I'll tell you more about it when it comes out, but it's called Top Floor. So they're, they're producing shooting programs at the moment with different, different people talking about different business related issues. Yeah, great. One tool you'd recommend to help grow a small business? The one tool that I think every business owner should use is a CRM, a, a customer relationship management system. The one that we use, I could never be without this. And there are different ones out on the market depending on the needs of the business. The one that we use for basic bananas is called Entraport. And again, you can find out more on directly on their website or we have a partnership with them. If yep. you go to basicbananas.com forward slash Entraport, O-N-T-R-A-P-O-R-T. They're out of Santa Barbara in the US and they're, they're great. I know the founder really well and they're just, they're just really helpful. I've never used it, but I've heard a lot of good things about it. Yeah, they're, they're just they're, they're they're similar to they're better. I would say in my this is all all you know subjective. The, I find the system way better than Mailchimp. Similar to Active Campaign, less complicated than Infusionsoft. Right. Good. Yeah. Great. All right. Final, my favorite question: What would you tell yourself on day one of starting out? I would say to trust my intuition. <laughs> great. Thanks very much for your time today. I think the audience got a lot of value out of what you shared with us. Congratulations to you both and the wider team for your phenomenal growth over the last, what is it now, 16 years? No, more like since 2009. So it's Nine. 12 years. 12, I would years. Say 12 years. Yeah. yeah. That's great growth. The two of you starting out, get, getting up to 25 and then back down about 17 and a half to COVID. So that's tremendous growth. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me, Troy. That's it. Thanks for listening. Please leave a review in iTunes or whatever platform you listen to us on. It means more small business owners will find our cast and help people with their business growth journey.